Boston College head coach Jeff Halfley is well respected in the coaching community from his time as a defensive coordinator at Ohio State. However, early in his third season, his team isn't living up to preseason expectations. Those expectations were admittedly pretty high, and a lot of that had to do with quarterback Phil Jerkovic. Jerkovic is a pocket passer who's accurate and tends to make good decisions. And when he's paired with the electric Zay Flowers at wide receiver, they make for one of the best quarterback wide receiver connections in the country. Their go-to passing concept is cross. In cross, there's a vertical and an arrow route which occupies these two defenders, which means the defense has to either put a nickel corner or a linebacker on a speedy slot receiver running across the entire field. This is inherently one of the toughest routes to defend in football and is one of the go-to ways of getting chunk plays in the modern game. If the defense bites too hard on the crossing pattern, it can open up a dig behind them. On this play, out of this trips formation, this crosser occupies this outside linebacker, and they send a vertical up the field to pull away this middle linebacker. That opens up a huge space in the middle of the field for Zay Flowers to have a walk-in touchdown. Really, the only issues with this connection is Dracovic can overfocus on Flowers and try to force him the ball. But they don't have to throw these crossing patterns to speedy slot receivers. They can also throw them to tight ends. Here Boston College loads up in a heavy set, which condenses the defense and gets Rutgers linebackers' eyes on the backfield. The play action draws them up even further, which allows their talented tight end, George Takis, to get open behind them. However, the biggest problem with Boston College's passing game is often they don't have enough time to get these passes off. Their offensive line has struggled mightily this season. They rank 121st in sack percentage and 119th in pressures allowed. In order to account for this, Boston College has tried some play-action rollout stuff, but frankly, it just hasn't been enough. These offensive line woes extend to the running game, where they've been unable to get much going at all. As it stands now, they're second to last in the country in yards per rush, and frankly, there's very few ways to spin it to make them look okay. It got to a point with Rutgers where they knew they could keep two high safeties back permanently in pass coverage and just control the line of scrimmage with six men. And that's basically been FSU's game plan through the first few games. They've played a lot of cover two man, which permanently keeps seven men in coverage and hopes their front five can control the offensive line enough to stop the running game. While this has helped limit teams in the passing game, it has allowed those mobile quarterbacks to escape and hurt Florida State in the running game. However, that game plan is probably going to pay dividends against Boston College, who won't be able to win up front while Florida State's able to double team Zay Flowers all game. And if those things happen, Boston College is going to have a long game on the offensive side of the ball. And really the only way I see them moving the ball consistently is by getting the ball in Zay Flowers' hands early, either on mesh routes or shallow routes. Now let's talk defense. Since Halfley is a defensive guy, it makes a lot of sense for the defense to be the strongest part of their team. And that rings true for this 2022 squad. As of now, their defense ranks 49th on SP+, which means that they're a fairly solid unit. In general, Boston College wants to play with one high safety. That means they're either going to be playing man free with one deep defender and man across the board, or cover three. But either way, they get to roll an extra defender in the box for run support. And in general, this has resulted in a pretty stout run defense. But what's been pretty impressive is they've been able to maintain decent coverage while staying in this one high shell. As it stands right now, they have the 29th best passing efficiency against them on the season. However, they really haven't faced a strong passing attack, so it'll be interesting to see if that holds up throughout the season. The extra presence in the box also allows them to vary up their blitzes, and they've been fairly effective at getting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Really, their only defensive weakness has come in their over-aggressiveness trying to stop the run. Here Rutgers is doing a read option, where this quarterback reads this defensive end to determine if he takes it or if he gives it to the running back. You can see immediately this defensive end crashes down to take the running back. And usually when this happens, the defense has to do what's called gap exchange, where since he's crashing inside, the linebacker has to replace him by flowing outside. Here you can see the linebacker stays inside, trying to stop up the interior run, which leaves the quarterback with wide open space in front of him. Here's another example. Early in this play, this H-back goes across the line of scrimmage to block the backside defensive end. This gets the attention of four Boston College defenders. However, the ball's going the opposite direction, which means there's not enough guys to take on this running back, and Virginia Tech brings another big gain. 
And finally, if you want to get real creative with it, you can do a reverse like this one, which draws up the defense and gives the records receiver space to get around the outside. Boston College is a team that's struggling right now, and as Florida State fans should be aware of, it's really tough to get an offense going with a struggling offensive line. However, Florida State does have some key injuries going into this matchup. And whether it's the young replacement Tate Rotomaker or a hobbled Jordan Travis, if Boston College wants to stay in this game, they're going to have to figure out how to get pressure on the quarterback. But if they can't do that, I'm afraid it might be a long night for the Eagles. Thanks for watching. If you're a Boston College fan, make sure to let me know how I did in the comments below. Also, if you want to hear more about their personnel, check out the Noel Thy Enemy podcast on the On The Bench podcast feed. As always, check out Knowles 247 for more great FSU information, and thanks.